Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for Journaling on a Budget starting over. This is our second week in this series and so we're going to put our pages together so we kind of have something to work with. I have chosen five pages for two separate signatures. So that will wind up being you take five pages and fold them in half. Each piece of paper winds up being four pages. One, two, three, four. So you wind up having 20 pages per signature or a 40 page book. This is going to be a long book, so it'll probably be a long series. Um, and I'll show you what I've chosen. So for the first of each signature, I chose a tea dyed paper. And then I have a, um, this is uh, Kool-Aid dyed paper. And then we have an envelope here made out of wallpaper. This one is um, paint dried paper. And that is where when I clean off my paint brushes, um, I don't clean them in my sink and dump it down the sink because it could clog it. So I clean it um, in a in a water bucket. And then if the water winds up pretty when I'm getting ready to go throw it out, I put it in a tub, uh, you know, a little wash tub. And then I just dye papers with it out in the yard. Just toss them out in the yard to dry. This one I put some leaves on. So it has some, um, you know, leaves there in the background because when it dried, it left that pattern. And then I have a, this is also a paint dried paper. And so is this one. So that is the colors that I have chosen. I, I'm just feeling bright today. So I may not feel bright for that long. I'm usually more of a muted color. So we'll see how well this goes since it's gonna take me so long to finish it. But we have another envelope over here. And then this is another, um, a leaf dried on there and the last page is again the tea dyed paper and then for the next one we've got tea dyed and this one because it was a legal size sheet of paper I folded it so that it would I'm going to glue it and make a pocket right there in the front of that signature and another paint dried paper this paper I had used green and pink red actually and um, so when I put it in the water and took it out and let it dry, the colors separated from the paints and it gave me this beautiful, beautiful piece of paper. When you make your own paper, you never know exactly what you're going to get and that is what makes it so fun. Um, this one here I believe is Kool-Aid and this one I think is Kool-Aid also and then another tea dyed. So that's what we have there but because I have the envelopes over there I want to put envelopes in here and if you watched last week's video this will look very familiar so we are going to make envelopes to put in here and so this is what we're gonna do we are gonna make this just like last week let's see that winds up I'm trying to remember um, which parts gonna show because this has got writing on it I believe that it's going to go this way so that that won't show. So we are going to take a 12 by 12 piece of paper, fold it up corner to corner on a diagonal, and fold it in half, just like that. And then we're going to find the center. And then we're just going to, well, let's put some marks on it so that they're the same. It does make it a little easier. I don't know what I did with my pencil. Okay, so I'm going to fold it um, two and a half inches is where I'm going to place my fold from the center and two and a half inches. Let me just double check that. This this ruler, a lot of them do. It's got that extra, about an eighth of an inch there. So I, sometimes I forget to measure from the line and not the edge of the ruler. Okay, two and a half and two and a half. Then we are just going to, the only reason I put that little press at center was just so that I could figure out where to put my marks. I'm going to fold it on that little line that I just made. 
there. I'm going to just fold it, bring this point right up to that fold line so that we know that we've got it straight. And then unfold it. And we're going to fold it right at this little mark that we made. And line it up with our fold that goes straight across. Line up the point of our paper there and fold it in half. Then we are going to nip off this corner here so that it doesn't make bulk when we fold this one back over. Give those a really good press. And then I'm going to glue. And this time I'm going to glue starting right here. I'm going to glue down this side. I'm going to open this up so that I don't get glue on the inside. So we're going to go down there and down there. And then right to here. Okay, so where I glued was where these two papers come together on each side, right here. I glued from there down to the point across and back. So we're going to flatten this out nicely. And then we're going to glue this little point. and tight and just fold that right there there we go now this is where our fold was where we folded it in half so we're just going to fold that back again just like that okay so this is what we made last week tea bag um, tags and we had all the pockets in them but this week as I was looking at it and I thought well wait a minute what if I fold this down it's an envelope so we're gonna fold that point down that way and fold this and because we're gonna stick it in a book it doesn't matter if they're exactly the same I like to make them the same, but you don't have to. Alrighty, and then if you have a corner rounder, you're just gonna round this corner. If not, you can stick a penny on there and draw around it and round the corner, or you can leave it with a point. It doesn't have to be rounded, or you can freehand it. I'm no good at freehanding things, so. Alrighty, so there we go. Now we're not going to glue this together at all because this is going to fit in into our book. It's going to be in our signature, so we're going to leave that like it is. And the last part that we're going to do here is we are going to cut. Here's where our fold is. We're going to go just a little bit below the fold and then go up on an angle right to this corner right where the fold is there. And that just, if you go straight across, sometimes it's a little long, so when you fold this back down, that little bit of paper gets caught. So if you come down just a little bit and cut a little angle, and it kind of gives it a finishing touch also. So now you can see the fold is here. It's hard to see. Let me try turning it this way. It's so hard to see, but the fold is right here and then I cut down just a little bit so that it gives that room so when this folds down, it won't catch that paper. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we just start down just a little bit from the fold and then cut on an angle right up to where that fold is at the top, just like that. And then we're just going to and I do these on just a little bit of an angle too, not a whole bunch of an angle. Actually, I wanted a little more than that though. Just a little bit of an angle so that when you fold it down, if you cut it again straight, it might stick out over the edge, but when you fold it down, it just gives you a nice little gap there, which looks nice also. 
And so then we're just going to do the same thing with this one. We're just going to cut a little bit of the edge of that flap off and then go right down to that point like that. And so there we go. Now we have our envelope. And we'll do the same thing over here. Come down just a little bit and go up to that corner. And then for this one, we're going to come in just a little bit and go down to that corner. And the same thing over here. Come down just a little bit and up to that corner. And then we're gonna come in a little bit on our flap and go down to the corner. So there we go. Now we have our envelope. Now when we get to the point that we're going to work with these, um, we can put a little stopper on here, glue something on there that this can tuck into to hold it shut. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not so sure what's going to be on the pages around it. And so for now, I'm going to just leave it like it is. So there's our first signature with that envelope. And this one is going to be in our second signature. And let's put it, I have put a doily in this one. There's a pocket already right there. So let's like skip this page, we'll put it right here. And so that's gonna just fit into our signature, just like that. Now, if you're gonna do a sewn signature, your center, hole would catch that so that would be good and it's nice and solid so it's not going anywhere but I am not really that keen on the sewn signature sometimes I like them and sometimes I don't because I like to be able to take my pages out so for this one I am going to do a loose signature which that's just what I call it I don't know what it is and um this is a piece of corrugated cardboard that I get from my recycle store and so I'm just going to cut it the size we need it for our journal cover. Here's all right. So I did kind of trim the edges down here a little bit. After you fold them all together, they work their way out. So you have to cut them down so they're all about the same size. And so this is not, it's not quite five and a half. I'm about an eighth of an inch short. So I'm going to make my cover and my back cover five and a half inches because that'll give us just a little gap, but it'll still make it close enough that if I want to stick like lace or something and I want it to stick out the edge of the book, I don't have a long ways to go. And then this is eight and a half inches long because I did not um, adjust. This is just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, regular copy paper. It doesn't ever have to be anything special. So I want it to be eight and a half inches long. And I want my cover to be five and a half inches. So I'm going to measure this to five and a half inches, which is right here. And because this is corrugated cardboard, I am just going to push that mark over. That was right there. And then just give it a press. There we go. So that's going to be the front cover of my book. Now this piece should be small enough. Yeah. I couldn't put it in my paper trimmer and cut this whole thing because it's too long. But now that I have folded this piece over, now it will fit in my paper trimmer. So now I'm going to cut myself eight and a half inches. Make sure that I've got that straight and make sure that I've got five and a half inches here. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to just take my paper trimmer and cut it top to bottom <clears throat> at, let's see, that was eight and a half. I want to double check, eight and a half inches. So I'm going to just barely go over eight and a half. I'm not even going to do eight and, a, eight and three quarters because, um, I don't like to have a lot extra on the top and the bottom because it's going to stand on the bottom and the top, they're holding it in. I don't know. I just prefer to um, what? 
have it height wise about the exact same height as my signatures. So there's eight and a half and about a sixteenth is what I've got here. Maybe I'll just about a sixteenth there. And now we're gonna hold tight and cut that. And that's what these are for. That's what they're on here for. It's to hold your paper down and to keep your fingers out of the way. But you want to hold your paper nice and tight because otherwise it may shift as you're cutting. Okay, so now we've got it the right height. And we've got the front of our book folded. Now I have to decide how big do I want the, sig the book to be. So... If I look at these right now, just the way they are, and kind of look at like how they're puffing out, it's about one and three quarter inches. So I'm thinking maybe two inches, hmm, two or two and a half. There's an awful lot of pages in there. Now, actually, we may wind up removing some, being that there are 40 pages here. It may just be too much. And if it's too much, then you remove some. Um, and so we'll do two and a half. Let me see. A two and a half inch spine. But that's a really wide spine. Two inches. I think I'm going to do two inches. Two inches plus the eighth of an inch on the end of my roller. So two and an eighth inches is about what I'm going to do. Give it a little fold right there. Make sure I have, have it lined up before I press it down. There we go. So there's our front cover, and there's our spine, and now we just have to do our back cover. I'm going to remeasure my front cover to make sure that I make them the same. And that is five and a half. So from my fold to five and a half is right here. Oh, and actually, I don't have to do it that way because I need to cut it. So since I need to cut it, I don't need to fold it. And I want it to be five and a half inches to my fold. So I'm going to find five and a half inches. It's right there. Fold it down nice and tight. Now we have our book cover. Then I have to decide exactly where I want my signatures to be in here. So we've got, what did I do? Two and a half? It's a two inch spine. So if we put one signature at a half an inch and we put the other signature at one and a half inches, that's going to leave three quarters of an inch in the middle. If we go five eighths and five eighths, that leaves six eighths in the middle. So I think that's probably where I'm going to put the signature. So I'm going to go from this side over an eighth is the mark between the quarter line. So you've got one, two when you get to the quarter line, three, four to the half, and five would be, and five would be right here. I guess on a rib is okay. Now the nice thing about this is I can follow this rib down to the bottom to mark the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to go five eighths from Let's leave it like this. The other side. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put it on this rib right here. 
there is no exact exact that it has to be and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper punch <laughs> it's a brand new paper punch so it's very stiff um, I'm going to lift this up so that I can see where I'm putting my cardboard in here and I'm going to punch it at just uh, no, I can't see half a punch and then I'm going to go ahead and put this one in here make sure I've got it in the right spot to be just a little bit deeper than that. I guess I could see it just as easily this way. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this rib down this rib down and that's that one and I'm gonna really quick double check yep yep okay I'm gonna do it this way and I'm just gonna look at my thing and try and line it up for half I just want a half a circle there and that was a little deep half a circle there there so now what we have is we have these cutouts here and we have those for a reason because we're going to put our signature in here and I don't want to sew it in but I do want to hold it in and this is how I do the book this is how it will stay even when it's done so you can add pages remove pages do whatever you want to do these are just um hair ties uh, like headband hair ties and I get these at the Dollar Tree usually like six or eight for a dollar and I'm just going to put this on here. And again, I picked bright colors because I was feeling bright today. So I'm just going to put that in there. It's a little bit loose. And that's totally fine because I'm going to use it. I'm going to, you know, be taking things in and out. But when I'm done, I can always tighten it up as tight as I want it. Or I can sew the signatures in if I decide that I want to do that. But this makes it so that it holds it together but yet allows me to remove a page if I'm painting it or stenciling it or anything like that. So we're just gonna put this one on here. Just like that. And there we go. That is it. We now have our pages picked. We have our envelopes in here, which this one may not stay because it's awfully thick. Um, and then we have our envelopes here, and we have our cover, and we have it held in with our rubber bands. So this is our new journal. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope you like the new envelope, um, double envelopes for our signature, because I thought that was the easiest thing. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.